Hello and welcome to the first episode of Videos and Games. I'm your host, Andy Ford, and today with me we have the one, the only... Ollie Painting. Yeah, are you the one and only? As far as I know, I'm the only one. Might be the only one. I'm probably not I the only one. I hope I'm the only one. That would be awesome. It'd be weird if I had a twin. They'd probably have a different name. Yeah, that's what I was... Yeah. Saying. I never asked for this. The Deus Ex storyline is based on the evolution of humans through augmentation, evolution through machines and mechanical advancements in technology and stuff, which is awesome, I think. Anyway. Uh, Surely that's not evolution, Andy. That's, you know, doing it yourself. Evolution? <laughs> Brain, if you become intelligent enough to, I don't know, change yourself mechanically, surely that's evolution in some way. Artificial selection, or just making yourself better? No, you're wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. I first saw the trailer back in 2010, and I thought it was amazing. It was one of the ones which I actually downloaded to my Xbox and played constantly on my big projector. Do you have a projector? Do you have a projector? No. You're not allowed to talk, you're not on camera. Sad thing about those sort of trailers is, though, that um, it doesn't really give an accurate representation of what the final game's gonna be like. You kind of just see a film, it's, isn't it? It's, it's like not It's not the game. Yeah, but still, that's the kind of thing. Just like that, uh, did you ever see the... Ah, oh, what the get, what the but, what the but, what the but, no, you, what, ah, uh, ah, uh, Dead Island. No. Oh. I didn't actually end up playing the first one, which is a shame, but I did play the second one and I thought it was amazing. I couldn't really get into the first one because of the graphics, I think, which is sad. It's a sad way of thinking about games. Seeing as I managed to play the second game first, I wasn't biased by anything, so I, th I think what people didn't like about the second game is that it wasn't as good as the first one. But as I said, as I played the second one first, I thought, oh my god, this is amazing. I could actually make choices that would affect things later on in the game. Had RPG aspects to it where I could um, just walk around and steal things. I gained the hacker ability and I could just go and rob ATMs, which was amazing. It was just... It felt like a first person shooter where I could actually go over to people and talk, and that's very rare in those sort of games. Usually, like Call of Duty, you just sort of run, shoot, and then somebody comes over to you and talks to you in a cutscene. That's about it. But this was actually fully integrated where I could make choices and talk to people, and it had RPG aspects to it where I could actually customize my character, make him stronger, make him faster, make him see in the dark. It was just absolutely amazing. It's a combination of well, first person shooter action, you can play a level just running in going kill everybody with my gun or you could take a sneaky and sh stealthy shadow route where you can go through air vents or up on rooftops and move along and finally there's the option to do a combination of the two which is amazing, that's the type of game I want to play and I've already got it on pre-order and it comes out August, so next month it's going to be amazing, I'm looking forward to it I'll definitely do a review when it comes out very recently I've been playing both Witcher 2 and Fear 3. So, what games have you been playing? I have been playing a reasonably uh, similar combination of Halo Breach Campaign mm -hmm. and Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. I see. Both Xbox. Yes. My, I've been playing Witcher 2 on the PC and currently I'm loving it. It's just... Um, I did play the first game. Yeah, see I played the first game uh, for a change. And I know, and I didn't finish it. I got right up to the final boss, and it was a, I think it was a bald-headed sorcerer man, and he just had this technique where he goes, Argh! and I fell over, and then I stood up and he goes, Argh! and I fell over again, and that was it. And I think I had this other dude witcher guy with me who's there going, I'll help you, friend, oh, and dead as well. And so, yeah, I just constantly died. There was nothing I could do. I just ran in and got owned, so I was obviously too weak to finish the game. I have no idea. It's not about skill, it's about my character. It was too weak. So maybe in true Final Fantasy style, you run outside, wander around in the wilderness for 19 days solid and level up two levels. I could do that, but that's called grinding. I hate grinding. <laughs> in any case, um, 
I, I just assumed that my the, the character is supposed to die at the end of the game, seeing as it was impossible for me to do it, and it was just ridiculous, and if I couldn't do it, nobody could do it. So, uh, in, my, in my eyes, Geralt died at the end, Geralt's the main character. And so I was really confused when they released the second one. I was like, what? But he's dead, how's that gonna happen? But, mm, in any case, uh, the second one so far is amazing, the story's amazing, the graphics are amazing. Look at the graphics, i show you uh, footage, look at the footage. It's got like beams of light coming through, I'm not used to this sort of game play. I've only recently got back into playing games on PC, although I am playing this one with an Xbox 360 wired controller plugged into my PC. But that's only com for convenience, uh, so I can just lie back in my chair and just do this instead of mouse keyboard try and push buttons over here at the same time graphics amazing story amazing um combat i'm not too keen on the combat he he seems a bit floaty for this amazing thing i'm i think i'm spoiled by games like um assassin's creed where you just hold block and he blocks wherever they're coming from and you stab and he, he just does what you want him to do naturally without you having to so a game that requires no skill what assassin's creed your like it. Have you played Assassin's Creed? I watched people play Assassin's well, Creed. Well, how would you know then? If it was me, then you probably think, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" But it requires skill. But you have you to just, time your blocks. You've just confessed that it's not skill. No, you it's the, the, the game the mechanics. Any attack from any direction is blocked. Yeah, it's cool. The combat's the weakest thing in it, which is a bit sad because it's a mainly combat-focused game. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't finished it. I'm about ooh, how many hours in? Do you think? five, six, seven hours in. Not entirely sure. But in any case, fantastic game and I look forward to finishing it. Oh, 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 and for you, all you perverts out there, there's lots of nudity in it, which, uh, which, yeah, uh, just uh, don't make the same mistake that I did and not expect it and go, hey, dad, dad, come see this. Come see this amazing graphics. So if you found that scary, uh, then you're gonna find Fear 3 terrifying because mm. Fear 1 I played and it was amazing because, I don't know, you didn't, there's a little girl who follows you around the game and she jumps out every now and then and just goes like, and I go, ah -ha! and I was terrified of this tiny little girl um, scaring me every 10, 15 minutes. But the thing is, it was every 10 or 15 minutes, something would happen like electricity would go spark and I'm like, oh, she's she's around, she's coming, she's gonna kill me. And um, at one point she did, this whole room started exploding towards me and I flew backwards and fell through a window and it was amazing. It was I hadn't played a game like that before, so I was looking forward to it. But Fear 3, well, I played Fear 2 and I, I never finished that because I got fed up with monsters. At the end of Fear 1, I'm just jumping, I'm like, Fear 1, Fear 2, Fear 3, Fear 1, end of Fear 1, I hated the part where ghosts start attacking you for no reason whatsoever. I'm fighting these really intelligent uh, AI humans who are sneaking around, flanking me, chattering over their radio going, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, I'm going to sneak around him, and I'm like, oh, he's going to sneak around me, and then he sneaks around, I'm like, oh, very intelligent, I'm really liking it. But Fear 2, for some reason, they go, oh, here's some monsters which crawl along walls and attack you. And I just went, I'm not interested in that. I just don't care. Fear 3 is a, a, a lot more like Fear 1 than Fear 2. But it's not scary. It's just turned into this action game with a little girl in it every now and then, which is weird. And uh, But, I don't know, it does have a full featured co-op mode, which is amazing, although it's even less scary because, I don't know, there's two people. At one point my friend was climbing up a ladder, and halfway up this ladder this little girl goes, Ooh, and he was too busy looking up, so he missed it, and I just saw some feet because, it, I don't know, it's just not as scary. Um, but it's fun, and um, 
Yeah, one of you controls the point man who can slow down time and go, ha ha, I'm amazing at shooting. And the other one controls the brother, if you have played the first one, who you end up killing in the first game. Hope I haven't ruined that. Spoiler, but spoiler. It's probably too late now. And he's got special telekinetic powers where he goes, lift you up, possess you, and then you run around as that soldier, killing people. It's just, it's really clever. It's, it's, it's a diverse way of playing the game, and I enjoy it. I wouldn't call it a buy. I'd only call it a buy later on down the road when, um... It's cheap. Yeah, when it's cheap. How quickly it all returns to you. The next game that I've been playing this week is one that's just been released on XBLA. It's called Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. The game is based on you play a character in a kill team. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Warhammer 40,000 universe, a kill team is a... ...to make one super unit. So in this section we're going to be talking about what we think is our game of the week. Basically it's a game that we're currently playing. It doesn't have to have recently come out. It could be, I don't know, 15 years old for all I care. But it's but a game that we're playing this week. Let me finish. Yeah. It's a game that we're playing this week and basically this is my favourite game this week. My favourite game of this week is Supreme Commander 2. It was recently on sale on Steam for £2.50, which is a bargain. You missed out. I bought two copies, as I always do, because I'm crazy one. like that. No, I've given it to my dad. And he's like, I don't know how to play. Oh, it's just amazing. It's a, do you know what it is? I haven't even talked about what it is. Real-time strategy game, you tell but you can zoom is. out. And you can zoom out and you can see the entire map and everything turns into icons. Like they set up this giant robot walker dude and I put a teleport point all the way over there and I just walk there and he teleports there and I go fight. Okay. I'm not selling this game well, but for £2.50 it was amazing. Pound sterling. Two pounds sterling. And fifty pence. And fifty pence. Is, is this your... That's me passing it on to you. Passing it on to you. Passing me. it on. Passing what on? Passing the mic. The mic, okay. Okay, my game of the week I think I'm going to have to go for is, as was previously mentioned in this episode, Jewels of the Planeswalkers 2012. I didn't comment when you did yours. I didn't. I didn't. didn't. You commented. I heard I it. I heard, I heard it. the comment. Anyway. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, it is a trading card game from real life that has been ported into a digital format. It is the second release of the game, the first one being simply Jewels of the Planeswalkers. Um, it's based on the trading card game Magic the Gathering, which has been going since 1994, and is the leading trading card game on the planet, I believe. So it's a popular game. Continue. Do you want to sit out of this, Sean Andy? Or are you going to behave? I do, I'm going to sit out. <laughs> okay, it's the second release of the trading card game that's been put into digital format. It has a couple of new uh, features which are actually spawned by the community as opposed to creators of the game. Uh, it was designed by some gamers in Alaska, a new style of gameplay called Arch Enemy, where you have three players versus one. Normally you'd think that that's a bit unfair, but the, the way it balances out is the, the single player gets an additional deck of cards which they flip over once a turn and it has an effect on the other three, so it might destroy all their creatures or drain all their resources. So it, it, it's a good way of tipping the balance and it also keeps the three gamers... It keeps the game changing, so they constantly have to adapt to a new environment. Uh, the campaign mode is fantastically better. With the original one, you just progress down a list of people you fight, uh, but with the new one, you progress across the board and you can choose to take different routes and fight different people in order to get to your final fight. It's, it, it's a really good game. So, uh, what are we going for? My digital trading card game or your zoomy out, killy, teleporty, mystical, robot, Cylon, not Battlestar Galactica game? Um... Let's put it to a vote between us. Do you like uh, real-time strategies? Yes. I don't like card games, so let's put that. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, mine wins. I think, I think, two versus one. Okay, one if we're going to look at it realistically, I think we probably would have to go with your game because there's probably a much greater market for real-time strategy than there is for trading card games. So, not to, not to diminish my, my game, but I think I'm going to have to have pass episode one as a victory to you for picking game of the week. Yep. 
So congratulations, Andy. Thank I you. defer to your your superior choice in games this week only. We'll see.